Oh man. Look at this great freaking show I went to. I can't believe I have to do all this. I wish I could just talk about wrestling and not do this editing. Oh wait, I'm live! Oh, sorry about that, folks. And I, oh, I even scared the cat away. Probably saw her go fuzzy over there. My name is Hobo Tom, and thank you very much for watching the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling YouTube show here on YouTube channel. Um, my girlfriend went to a Christian rock concert. We might have videos of that. Just a tease. I don't know. We'll see. If she says put this on, hey, we're 60 40 partners. Her 60, me probably 30. Actually, she, she's probably 70, and I'm 30. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the Lucha Underground video I put up earlier. Now it's time to talk to NXT. I'd like to thank everyone for their views. Again, I had my 2000 view party a couple days ago. So please share, like, comment, and some sub sub uh, subscribe. Also feel free to hope to email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail dot com. Kind of long day. I had to get the washing machine replaced. Had to go out to NXT. You can tell by my very scribble. And it is Red Wine Friday. Cheers, everyone. I already had the pizza. Finishing up the last glass of red wine. Talk about some NXT. Do some editing. And it's off to sleep for me. Woohoo. I have the weekend with no videos. Although in the future, I might post some Ring of Honor videos. Might do a Ring of Honor impact combined thing. Just to kind of totally encapsulate wrestling. And I might get into not destiny. What's the other D word? It used to be whatever it was what 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 culture wrestling. Jeez, that's really bugging me. But I have to worry about that later. Let's talk about some NXT. Yes, I went to the NXT at Sanford, Florida. Oh my god, I was so shocked. They really treat Daytona Beach like the red-headed step kid. I mean, these were really good matches. Let me talk about the venue a little bit, because it's a I went there. It's not a bad venue. I mean, it's your typical Civic Center. I mean, it was cool. It was air-conditioned. It wasn't uncomfortable. My only thing, and there were no bleachers. So all the seats were on the same level. So no matter if you got front row seats, second row seats, if the row in front of you stood up, and let me tell you folks, there are some real jackapes that go to these wrestling events. They just stand up here, get way too excited, and they stand up, the row behind them stands up, the row behind them stands up, they have to stand up. All of a sudden, I have to stand up. So that's the only bad thing about having no bleachers. There, there's no leveling. So they're all one level. Again, when I was at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, I was to the full floor level, which was amazing. But you kind of had to keep looking over people's heads and we're watching the team most of the time. Whereas my sister was up at the very top of the lower bowl. And a, a direct line of sight. That, 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 those seats just seem so much better. But for the experience, and really more for my nephew, that, that was a fun thing. And again, if you saw my video about my WrestleMania experience, he was more thrilled to get a snow cone with a marshmallow on it. He got a cheer for some wrestlers. I taught him some wrestling cheers. So that was good. But again, no bleachers. Eh, I mean, I'll give it this much. At least it's not a high school gymnasium. Or not even a high school gymnasium. Not even. I went to the one in Orlando. It was like a middle school, grades, elementary school gymnasium. 
That was terrible. It was not really overly packed. The front rows were all sold out, which which I kind of expected. Again, the first two rows said they're, they're prime seats. It was good. That was a big line for the autographs. And then once that autograph line kind of trickled down, um, the general admission section did fill in. I did get a selfie with a wrestler who I will mention later because I wrote her name down kind of somewhere in here. It's a little bit of a higher class crowd. I found a Stella Atois clan can. So it adds to my aluminum pile. I think I still have to put that in. Shoot. That's just sitting in the back of the truck bed. Again, it was a, it was a it was a good event. And actually I'll say it bored on great, mainly because of the talent that was there. And the wrestling that was there. Because some of the talent was the same. It came from the that was here in Daytona Beach, but the wrestlers themselves just really seemed to have a different attitude. They're like, "Hey, this is Sanford. We have to roots here. We just can't put on a blah show because these people might not come back. There's enough to do in Sanford. And by the way, the Civic Center is in a beautiful location. I mean, here in Daytona Beach, it's it's like." Down the road for me. Right where the bums are. There, it's almost right along the river. I, I want to say it's only one or two blocks right away from Lake Monroe. Beautiful lake walk. If I had my girlfriend there, I wouldn't be doing this show. I'd be having a moonlit lakeside walk. My girlfriend. My arm, and I'd feel happy. Cause my most beautiful girlfriend deserves not just this hobo. But again, it was a really good event. I mean, they had at least some stars show up. And talk about stars, the person they had show up at the last Daytona Beach show was released. Why have them sign autographs? Why get people's hopes up? They just want to crush Daytona Beach. <sniffs> Nor is that Daytona Beach is such a hot, cold crowd. That's an issue for another day, though. But again, here they had Oni Lorkin, Danny Birch, and Jesse. And Jessie seems to be the local superstar. She's I, I saw her first at Dade City. She came then to a Daytona Beach. So she seems to be really, really local. The fans love her. She has she does have that girl next door look and vibe to her. And that was really the whole kind of pre-show and the whole arena. I mean, for the most part, there was a really good hype up for the match card too. The guy, and I, I forget his name. You saw a picture of him. He seemed excited to be there. Whereas the one guy from Daytona Beach is like, Hey, Daytona Beach, this is NXT. And just didn't carry that same energy level. Crowds will feed off energy levels. I mean, the first two rows really look full. I mean, there's always going to be the handicapped sections. And there's always one or two seats missing, especially in the second row. First row looks full, though. I mean, there's always that odd one seat between people in two rows. I mean, once I had to get one front row seat and got the three second row seats just because of the pricing. Well, not so much the pricing, but just because of the timing and my, my evil job. But again, everything started to fill up really after the autographs. People were hyped for the autographs. That was pretty cool. And actually, there were more wrestlers walking around kind of during the show. And as you'll see with, well, I might, I might show my selfie later. 
that's on my cell phone. But I'll talk about that later. The rest of us were out and about, not mingling per se, but they had to go to the bathroom. They had to get something to eat. Some of the talent had to work the cameras. And it was just really cool. I mean, it was a really hot start. And the fans were hot. It was really good. So let's get into some wrestling, folks. The first match of the card. We have Caius. Oh, no. Chris Hero, who is still my hero, by the way. Versus Stacy someone. And kind of says, uh, he, he kind of starts off, it's a really good competitive match. He mentions that this is Stacy's first match. So the crowd kind of applauds. They say, yeah, you're in there with Kaya Sano. Good for you, man. And this video is going to look really bumpy because I learned my lesson from dealing with security at Daytona Beach. And I will, talk, I will address that a little bit as the video goes on. Really, for the one specific moment, they were really good this time, and it wasn't the big intimidating guys. They're like, "You better know what to do." The guys just like, "Listen, tranquilo." But so this video is going to be kind of choppy. We're gonna have a whole bunch of probably one minute to thirty second clips to show you of the wrestling matches. The ring entrances are a little bit different. They're a little bit more lenient. They don't want to. Give away any spoilers for professional wrestling. Ooh. I'll get to that later. I already did a whole rant and rave about it. I'll rant and rave about it a little bit. Not too much, though. And then I also have to stop at the 20 minute mark because I just realized I'm at 12 minutes. I haven't even gotten to the card yet. That means this was a good event and a Good place and a good crowd. So I'm already getting to the matches by now. You know, the place was like... But the first match, again, you have Kai Sono versus Stacey Williams, and this was really fun. I mean, Kai Sono really has fun with them. I mean, Stacey can take a bump.
he was really good. And the thing I liked about this is that the crowd appreciated the fact his work. This is his first match in front of an audience. And you're doing this, taking these kind of bumps, putting this effort forward. Trust me, any this felt like a really indie match, and it should have been Chris Hero instead of Kai Sono. Because it really felt like that indie match where it's it was fun, it was enjoyable. Everyone liked it. It was that whole spirit of competition thing. I mean, this was an amazing match. And the crowd was really hot from now, really to about the match after the intermission. And then it just kind of died down. Again, I'll get to that later. Again, there were fucking blows. And my fucking blows, it just wasn't a, a slap. It was, oh. Like, you felt it. It was good. I mean, Kai's on a really didn't hold back. I mean, the whole the whole match was good. The wrestling was tremendous. Again, I think the big thing that allowed the crowd to get into it, and this probably added to the enjoyment of the entire show, is that, and I forget its name, but the following match is scheduled for one fall. One fall! The whole, there was a certain cadence to it. There, there, weren't, there weren't time limits. It's like the following match is for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Because like, fall one, fall, what? What am I supposed to say? Oh, these two are wrestling? Okay, let's, let's go. I mean, that was really good. And I do appreciate that they had the change. I mean, the cadence was changed, which was really good. The referees even changed their cadence. One, two, three. He gave that that a pause. So the people could do the do the two sweet. I know it's dopey, and I know it's not WWE. The crowd wants to be someone involved. They're they're here. They know when they can participate. They know how to, especially if they know how to participate. I mean, they, they want to be a part of the show. They say, you know what? Make me involved. And I will give you everything. I will chant you. I will boo you. I will cheer you. I will go absolutely bonkers. Give me a reason why. And as a wrestling fan, that's all you really want. You want to say, you know what? I... I as a mark, I know it's I know it's choreographed, but give me a chance to say you guys are doing awesome out there. Let me cheer for you. You're an amazing heel. I'm gonna boo the bejesus out of you. Boo, boo, yeah, yeah. I mean, the crowd just wants to be a part of. It. They want to feel like they have some involvement. They want to be that third person. Well, the fourth person, I guess, in the ring, because the third person is the ref. But they want to have that, that input. It's like, you know what? We're enjoying this. Keep on going. And we will cheer for you. We'll say, oh, please, don't stop. If you lose and you put on a tremendous show, we will literally give you a stand-up, applause you and say, you deserve it, and say thank you, and do all the other crowd chants. Give the crowd a moment to enjoy itself. Let them en let them enjoy the theater of the absurd. And that's gee, I should have been an English major, and I should have wrote about the theater of the absurd. If I ever do get that professorship position, first thing I want to say is I want to say teaching the the, the theater of the absurd because you know they're going to do the same show over. And over and they've practiced it over and over again. They never had a live crowd though, so they say, I think this will work. We'll see what does work. And Kai Sono is such a master of working the crowd, figuring out what works, timing, even with a new guy. It seems so smooth and seamless. The guy Stacy could have been wrestling there for 10 years. And before that, 15 years on the indie scene. And it still would have been that high of a quality match. 
Because this, I mean, I wanted to almost give it a flame and young match. I downgraded it. It was the guy's first match. He's not beating Chris Ono. As a smart, I knew what the ending was going to be. It was still a great surf and turf match, which is saying nothing wrong to Kai Sono or Stacy. I mean, Stacy gets more hyped up. Again, your first match, you're never going to do good on your first match. I don't care who you are. Your first anything. Your first day at work. Your first day teaching. Your first day at school. Your first day at kindergarten. Your first day staying at home. It's all going to suck. But you know what? You put the effort. You were rewarded by laudable laws. So feel good about that. And that's why it was a surf and turf match. You know Kai Sono is going to win. But the guy put on such a good match against him. It was great. It was nearly oh, perfect. It was a surf and turf quality match. I think that was a nice show at the end. So, I mean, really, I mean, Stacy's going to be a really great wrestler. He's agile enough. My only fear is that he falls into that NXT kind of trap of being the NXT wrestler for, for life. We'll get to that later. I'm going to take a quick pause here. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And I'm back. Yes. I think my little video software can handle about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how much I rant and rave. Then I still have production on this to do. And then I have to do the final, the final production, add in videos, and then the final production. That's the part that feels like work. But you know what I'm doing at home? Hey, who can say they are working when they actually get to enjoy a glass of red wine? <laughs> Listen, if you can drink some red wine during work, it's not work. So let's go to the second match of the evening. And this showcase, Io Shirai and Casey. It was a woman's tag match versus Ali and someone.
I didn't even catch the name. This will probably be on the video. Again, you have the someone being the bigger, stronger wrestler versus again the smaller wrestler. Oh my god, is is Casey tiny? My thigh is bigger than her waist. I mean, Aaliyah. She has that that holy hill persona going. She throws it. She she throws her jacket at you. Try. I don't need to take my jacket off to win this match. Again, Aliyah's becoming the perfect heel. Unfortunately, she's going to be that forever NXT wrestler, though. And I just have a very, she's going to be NXT for life, just like I mentioned. Yoshi is the much more agile wrestler. Again, they do some good tag team work. And tag team wrestling, classic, the classic tag team wrestling, classic tag team double teams by Io and Casey. Casey's very athletic. I know in her promo, she literally climbs up the ring post area, which I don't think I could even do. I have problems getting in the ring. I think it, it took me the one time I did get in a ring. Well, the first time I got in, I think it took me about three to five seconds to figure out actually how to get. Over the second rope, but it didn't seem like a girl, and go in the bottom rope. And I said, you know, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to go over the And that took me like three to five seconds. So Again, I don't know. Again, you have nat you have natural ability. Again, I, could, I might be able to do things. And I'll talk about my stature versus some of those wrestler statures. I mean, some of those NXT guys. It's just a weird build. I'm sure it has to do with the wrestling industry versus being here. I wrestled in high school, wrestled in college. Did a year of crew in college, which sucked. Did three years of rugby in college. Played high school football. And really, I wrestled from grade 8 to my freshman year in college. So I wrestled for the six years. So my muscular is probably a little bit different. And I try to keep it up. But I'm at that point of my life where I'm just prolonging or postponing the inevitable. Because so again, I think this okay, this shoulder twice, this one once. Destroyed my knee and realized I'd never be a pro football player or a pro wrestler. But well, that's that's a whole conversation for another day. And then, again, the heels, they did great heel work in a tag team match. I'm going to isolate the opponent. I'm going to cause distractions as a heel tag team. Um, again, they're not announcing the time limits, which is great. NXT learned something. They learned that we can't do this. The crowd's going to go... <laughs> again, Ali is doomed to be the NXT for lifer um, so my Casey, that's my only real fear, only because she doesn't have the size, she doesn't have the gimmick, she doesn't have the promo skills, Aaliyah has a little bit of the promo skills, but again, the thing in, the thing is, for the main roster, you need to have that really good character, or you will get run out of the business very quick. Yeah, it was a really hot crowd. There, there were some botched in there. Um, they just seemed to be getting used to the ropes. I know Casey kind of had the one rope. So we're like, oh, let's try this again. Just don't tell the audience that. Just, just do a couple things, and, and then you can go back to it. Again, it might be a minor quibble, but, but when I see someone saying, let's try this again. Okay, so I know you were supposed to do this for the first time. It didn't work. Why well, try it a second time? So, I mean, that's that's my own minor quibble with the whole thing. And, I mean, other than that, the crowd was great. The crowd was hating Aaliyah. They were chanting Io Shirai. And I know in Daytona Beach, when Io Shirai showed up, they were all chanting Asuka, Asuka. They're just a really smarky... Jack Ape! Jack Ape! My girlfriend who's listening. Crowd. Was not cursing this time. 
Jack Ape is different than the other Jack. But, I mean, it was a little botchy. Yeah. I mean, when it looks really obvious to the crowd, the crowd goes, <laughs> QF up. Yeah, then you're going to get downgraded. So this is really a cheeseburger match. Again, you saw some action I kind of tossed in there. Again, I was more conscious of security. I didn't want to get booted out or have my camera taken away from me. They were really different this time, though. And it's always weird whenever the NXT staff act differently at different NXT events. There's no consistency. I'll get that's That's a minor quibble, though. That actually comes up in, in the next show where you have Fabian Eichner, who again held a, one of the great promos. But again, security. I mean, the fans are here. They want to hear Fabian Eichner speak. I mean, just don't take their. Just don't say, hey, you, hey, this is your first warning. Put it away. You have to stop that. I mean, it's, it's a pain in the butt, I know. If I was a security guy, I'd be like, you know what? As long as I don't see, as long as I don't see the same guy having that whole video camera for every match for the whole 
three, uh, two and a half, three hours. If he takes a break every so often, you know, I'll say, ah, good. And I know it's it's all about preserving the integrity of pro wrestling, but I mean, some of their cell phone, they're not, they're not going to take a two uh, two hour, two and a half hour long video. Didn't happen to me this time. I kind of learned my lesson a little bit. But again, I feel bad for the fan, though. I feel for the fan. It's like, you know what? I want to record this. I want to say, well, listen to this guy, Fabian Eichner. He talks great. He's amazing. Oh, he does talk amazing. I want to go see him wrestle. You're taking away a potential future fan for, for, the, for, the, for the shame of another fan. I went on a whole, I think, 10-minute spiel, my last video about that. That's all I have to say. I learned my lesson. I know how to play cat and mouse with security. And I just hate it when it happens to other fans that are really there for the casualness of it. Like, hey, I want to take this video. I want to show my buddy at home. I want to say, hey, listen, this, this guy's really a jerk. Let's go see him wrestle. I want to see how badly he gets beat up. This guy's an amazing face. I want to see his work. He talks about doing all these flips and stuff. I want to see those flips and stuff. This is almost free advertisement. I've been asked by people, and I'll do my cheap plug to Southern Pro Lucha Libre. And even the local Daytona GoPro. Um, I'll go wrestling. I don't want to see it. And they, they, they said, well, we're going to take your camera away. I'm like, oh, you're not getting in any free YouTube post. It's only going to be at most seven minutes. So I'm not going to take away the whole match. I'm not going to videotape the whole match. I know there are copyright issues. I just want to give a little taste. I want to give a flavor. So again, this was really good. I can't get the whole promo because then I saw the one person and I'm like, ah, oh, I have a funny feeling about this. Bro! Oh yeah, Bro! Put away your camera, bro. Because we had the debut of Matt Riddle. And there were bro chants going throughout the building. This crowd was going absolutely bonkers. Welcome to NXT, bro. Eichner, by the way, plays a great heel. He could be on the main roster as the jobber to the stars. He could be the heel jobber to the stars. He is so good at that role. He could probably really be that kind of like no name, always there jobber like there used to be in the 80s and 90s. I was talking about that with a good friend. see like a, a squash match every so often back in the 80s and 90s you'd see the superstars all the time the macho man ver versus a jobber hulk hogan versus a jobber dino bravo versus a jobber the heart foundation versus jobbers heck the hardy boys were even one-time jobbers to the rock and roll express it's part of the whole industry you'd be up in the main roster be the job stars you are probably be getting a lot better paid. And people would know him. And he's really darn good at doing what he does. So again, Eichner plays a great heel. I mean, the only thing that confused me is that there was a chant of Rusev Day. Really, crowd? Whatever. He just wanted to get, you were getting too involved. But then they had a chance to, to, to chant, let's go, bro. I mean, I, in, in the match, 
Eichner dominated early. I mean, Riddell just needs to learn how to wrestle big guys bigger than him and to have a longer match. Because I know in Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, he did wrestle he did wrestle Keith Lee, who was actually featured in this this card. Kudos and a and I forgot who he was until like oh, that's a really big Oh that's Keith Lee. So again, he just has to learn to wrestle big, powerful guys. For the most part, it was a really good match. He also has to learn you never hit the last yes kick. Always, always, always lose on that. Or the last bro kick. Bro, bro, bro. Ah, 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 not that last bro kick. Even IQ knows how to freaking do that. I mean, there's this bros going throughout the crowd. There were some moments. Both men were amazing. There were a holy shit chance. Really good. I mean, some of the stuff they did was amazing. I mean, I'll give credit where credit's due. Matt Riddell's good. He still has a little bit of a learning curve to go. But, I mean, it was really fun, though. And again, this was a really good cheeseburger quality match. For a person's first outing in an NXT, even though he was this whole huge indie star, this was amazing. And against an established NXT heel, this was good. I mean, there was a crowd pop. If the face pop, the crowd was hyped. He knows how to get the crowd hyped. Baby Nagy knows how to get the crowd absolutely furious. And my only thing, it was a cheeseburger match. Because he has to be used, he has to get used to having a longer match against against bigger, stronger opponents, people who aren't sizably bigger than him too. So he tried to do a deadlift power bomb thing, and it took him like I think at least two tries, maybe even three, to hit it. And he was just gassed and tired. He needs to learn to pace himself and just realize that. This isn't in the indies anymore. These aren't small guys. These are these are the heavyweights. These are the big guys with the muscle. They get here for a reason. So I mean, again, it was a fun cheeseburger match, though. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. The crowd loved it. The crowd was going absolutely bonkers. And for the fourth match, you had the heel Re Rebecca Bourne versus Con versus something Conti. <laughs> Again, this is kind of a classic match 
And you have the bigger, stronger woman versus smaller, more agile, more technical woman. I mean, both wrestlers were playing to the crowd. I mean, that news was fun, though. Um, again, Bourne always seems like she's on the verge of a well, of a of a wardrobe malfunction. This time, I don't know what you call the clips, but the but the clips attached to her bustier or g-string or pan or panties or pants, wh whatever you ladies call them, they came off the stockings, and it's like, oh wait a second, and she does wear that very narrowly cut, not necessarily thong, but cheeky bottom. Outfit, whereas you can see it kind of starts to rise up a little bit, and you saw a little bottom shelf there. So, I mean, she's just on the verge of a wardrobe malfunction. That's happened a couple times. I think once I even I even swore I saw something once. Again, she kept it the slower pace match, which is the heel supposed to do. And again, she has a heel fit. When the, when the heel doesn't get the three count, two, what do you mean? That was three, two, three, two, three. So again, that was really good, though. And again, a good flirty by Conti. She's just not big enough. And again, the crowd was in, interested. I mean, she had interactions with the crowd. She would wait to the crowd and say, yeah, whatever. She'd be like, yay, thank, th thank you, yeah, whatever. And it was really good. She's learning how to get the crowd against her, which as a heel you're supposed to do. And she's learning the crowd interaction. She's learning how to deal with the crowd. She's learning how to deal with hecklers. So I say, you stupid. It's like, yeah, you wish you got this. And the guy would be like, what? He's like, hey, you're a terrible wrestler. You wish you could do this. And the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> well, again, it's a, it was a really good flurry. And again, Bourne knows really how to work the crowd and makes the match interesting. You know what? You get the crowd involved. Oh, mind blown. They're going to cheer you. They're going to boo you. You're going to have them eating out of the palm of your hand. And it's going to be fun. Again, this was a really good quality. It was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. It was good quality. Let's see, do I have time to get to this? Yes, I do. And then you have the, the tag team match, I think, right before the break. Yep, there we go. That's the break. So you have the heels. Kona Reeves versus... and I'm sorry, Kona Reeves and Rich Mercinov. Thank you for writing the name on your back of your uh, back of your singlet. Versus Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. I'll have more to say about Oni Lorcan later, though. I'll say that, though. So the match. Again, Kona, Kona Reeves is learning how to work a crowd. Comes out as Kona Reeves, the finest. 
and he's learning how to how to work the crowd. I mean, only Lorcan and Danny Birch comes out. The first thing the crowd cheers, they do their, their, their one, two. Oni's in the ring, and then they, they go to their respective ring corners. First thing the crowd chants, Oni's going to kill you. And you can see him get the biggest smile. He's enjoying it. Conan Reeves is like, well, I'm the heel. They're supposed to say that. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh, he's going to kill you. He had the biggest smile. He broke Kayfabe for, for three seconds. And then got to the wrestling match. And... Oh, wow, this was a good wrestling match. This was so much better than the Oni Lorcan, Danny Birch versus the Street Profits match they had in Daytona Beach. Why couldn't they have done that here? You don't need a time limit. Some people are watching their wash. You're like, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Okay, let's get this over with. But here there was no time limit. Again, the following match is good for one fall. One fall. Two, three. I mean, it was so good. I mean, the other guy, Rich Ursmersonov, I, I do apologize if I butcher his name. I mean, he knows the classic wrestling holds. Very capable wrestler. And he turned into a really fun match.
he just I, I, I mean Conor Reeves really just seems there because he was the one who's getting beat up all the time. And there's always that one heel who who's the beat up heel. I mean Oni Lorcan just so good. He likes pops. And he likes just having that huge pop. Birch, he just likes basic mat wrestling. Joint manipulation, bending people in wrong ways. Oh. Again, this was so much better. And the crowd came up with a good chant. One, two, woot, woot. One, two, woot, woot. It was fun. The crowd got involved. Again, the wrestlers realized that the crowd's getting involved. They have energy. They hulk out. That's what they want to do. That's why, at least, that's what I think they want to do. They want to say, "Okay, whatever I'm doing has an impact on the crowd. The crowd's responding, and and they're in the way they should be responding. Hey, I'm the face there. They're going bonkers when I do something. I'm gonna do it again." The crowd would chant one more time. He looks around. I just said, "Whoa, one more time!" The crowd was absolutely loving it. This was such a solid match. I mean. If it wasn't Kona Reeves and, and Mesner, I mean, they knew how to do the double team, tag team, heel moves. Again, they knew the fundamentals. They knew isolation. They knew how to distract. You know how to cut the ring in half. They made. They actually helped this become a cheeseburger match. I mean, versus what the Street Profits did: headlock, armbar, double team. Okay, let's go double team, head bar, arm lock. Or headlock, arm bar. Okay, we're going to throw in chop, chop, headlock, arm bar, double team. Okay, double team, chop, chop. Oh, big smosh things, all four men, arm bar, headlock. So they learn, and, and trust me, as, as a fan, I truly appreciate that they really figured out what the – what the algorithm is. What the formula is. So again, this was really good. Again, a really solid, good cheeseburger match. Wow, this is going to be a lot of me talking, isn't it? That's what happens when I have some pizza and some good red wine. Then after this match, I knew it was going to be kind of the kind of the break. We're going to have a break about midway through the match. This way, the audience has a chance. Instead of during the match, they can get up, get some merch. The hot, I don't, even, I don't even know if they had hot dogs there. But get a soda, use the bathroom. I gotta go use the bathroom too. The poor F. Yeah, these are kind of my comments. The poor F had to wipe down the, the ropes. I guess the wrestlers were complaining the ropes were getting moist. Hey, that's the way it is sometimes. I mean, security is stingy, especially about the debuts. I mean, not as bad as Daytona, but I mean,. They really don't have to do that, especially if it's a casual fan with their cell phone. You know, I think the only the average video time is I think about twenty minutes on a cell phone. So I mean, unless you're holding it there the whole time, standing up for thirty minutes with a ring on the cell phone is going to get boring. So, I mean, I understand wh wh why they are. Again, it's it's really not to spoil their in ring debut at a Pro wrestling match. But I can get it though. I mean, <laughs> they did not get Hobo Tom this time. So I felt good about that. 
Oh, I would also like to give a shout out to MJ Jenkins. Thank you very much, MJ Jenkins, for the selfie. Again, when you go to NXT shows, um, they're not as I want to say they are produced. They're not as produced by their own production crew. A lot of the wrestlers do do their own production. So I really like to thank MJ Jenkins for allowing me the selfie. I thought I'd recognize her from NXT. Again, she just to give a very quick story. The only way I can recognize wrestlers, especially nowadays, all the wrestlers seem to be very, very average person. And I'll talk more about that when I talk about how I saw Oni Lorcan. I'll talk about that now. I saw Oni, Oni Lorcan got some food, and he had a he had on a t-shirt and shorts. And if it wasn't the face, and if it wasn't the fact that he came from the backstage area, I would kind of very, very quietly behind everyone to go get some food and then just kind of moseyed on back. Very, very quietly. He's a very, very humble person. At least it seems. I mean, very quiet. He, he didn't take away from the shows. He didn't say, hey, look at me. I'm a pro wrestler. I'm here getting food. Again, Stacy was another wrestler. He just kind of went out to use the bathroom and then came back in very, very quiet, very humble. Like, And I can truly appreciate that. Again, with MJ Jenkins, Thank you very much for the selfie again. She had to work the hard cam. And I guess that's one thing that I kind of, when you're in NXT and you're that kind of l l lower level developmental wrestler, you, they, they say, okay, you have to be here. You're on the hard cam. You have no match. Again, it's one of those things where I swear if Candice Lurie walked into the, the store I work at, she could wear a hockey jersey. This is Candice LeRae on the back and have a cupcake in the front. The one tough cupcake in the front. And I, I'd have no clue who, that, that that was Candice LeRae. Um, I did have a chance to see Sonya Deville and Tracy Evans work out at my gym. The only reason I, I knew it was those two is because when I went to NXT that night, Sonya Deville has a very prominent rib tattoo. And when I went to the gym, I saw a fit-looking woman with a rib tattoo. And it wasn't the normal hour I go to the gym, so I'm like, well, maybe this is the hour she goes. I was there at like 2, 3 o'clock, and I'm like, yeah, that's not normally I go there at night. And I'm like, yeah, maybe this is the hour she goes and works out. Whatever. I just remember, like, that's a pretty big tattoo. I go to the show, and she was actually working out on the elect on the yeah elliptical machines with a blonde hair woman. They were talking back and forth. I know it's a blonde hair woman again. Didn't look big, but look cut. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe, maybe they're fitness models. Maybe they do this all the time. Hey, this is the Daytona Beach. People work out just to look good like that. I'm like, eh, the blonde, whatever. Her, eh, it's a big tattoo, whatever. So I saw the, so I saw um, Evans and Deville working match, and I'm like, I saw that tattoo before. That's Sonya Deville. I saw her at the gym. And wait, that blonde-haired woman. I saw her too. So unless they really, again, if, if they walked into the store and, and, and wore normal clothes, I'd be like, hi, welcome to my store. Is there anything I can help you with? Here's a coupon. But again, uh, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you what, the fans at Sanford were really were amazing because I got to get into a, a little bit of an in-depth conversation conversation with the guy in front of me. And he brought his kid. They were, we were talking about Mel. Oh, Matt Rydell had he, he's really good, but he lacks this. And as a wrestling fan, that's a very fair critique. I mean, Matt Rydell is a really good wrestler. He still has to learn the NXT. He, he he's up here in the Indies. Now he's back here at the NXT. He has to learn the NXT WWE style. Hey, there's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be a little bit bit of a disconnect. We're talking about that. I'm like, you know what? I swear I've seen that woman in the ring before. And he's like, yeah, may maybe. I don't know, some of these wrestlers, aren't, they're, not, they're, they're not that big. 
I'm like, and I told him the story about how I saw Sonya develop my gym. It's like, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I'll say come in like Asuka with like green and purple hair. Or are like super jacked, or have like a goatee, have a goatee down to here, and just look all veiny and evil looking. Like again, Tommaso Bumaye, Champa. I mean, you're not going to know who some pro wrestlers are. And it was really cool because I'm like, where is she? Looks fairly wide, but not jack. And she has this like red curly mohawk. It's, I hate to say it, but that wrestler look. So I'm like, hey, I've seen you in the ring before. Went up to her during the break. Really nice, humble person. Amazing person. Again, if you ever meet her in person, just, just say, Hobo Tom thinks you're the greatest person ever. Because you go up to her and it's like, haven't I seen you in the ring before? Oh, you must watch NXT. It's like, yeah, I've probably seen you on house shows. She's like, yeah. Do you mind if I get a selfie with you? She looks around. She's like, oh, yeah, that's okay. Got a selfie with her? I'm happy. That's okay because my girlfriend got a, a bunch of Christian rock, Christian heavy metal and Christian rap band members. So, tranquilo. We're even. Even playing. But, again, that was my one thing. I, again, I really want to thank MJ Jenkins. Thank you very much. You really made my night. I was kind of looking forward to seeing Amber over there. One day, well, I know Oni Lorkin, Danny Birch, and Jesse took some time out of their busy schedule to sign autographs and to be with the crowd. I do appreciate that fact. Um, I, again, I enjoy their work. They're not my f super favorite wrestlers. A lot of people I, I have high on my autograph list. I do, trust me, I do fully appreciate the fact that they do give their time for the fans. And again, MJ Jenkins, thank you very much. I think there were a few other women. Oh, and uh, this Oni Lorcan. Again, he came out, he just wanted to get a bowl of food, he was hungry. It was late, even my stomach was grumbling. If I knew I was going to have some pizza and red wine when I got home. I might have been sorely tempted to get a soda or a hot dog at the venue. You see him come out and without his wrestling boots on. Guy has skinny legs. I think my forearm's as big as his leg. I mean, not to brag, but my calves are pretty big. Granted, my calves have to hold up a whole bunch of me. I mean, he's all pectoral muscle. He's all bench press. He's all abs and he's all ribs. He's all back. He's like nothing legs. I mean, granted, I'm probably not squatting as much, but granted, uh, uh, my legs hold up probably twice as much as his legs do. So it's just really great to see these wrestlers kind of out of their element. They're not so much interacting with fans, but they're there, though. And I can fully appreciate that. So, again, it'll be the last time I say this to avoid embarrassment. Thank you very much, MJ Jenkins, for that selfie. I will post that probably on my next video. So, again, I wanted to give her a shout-out. Then we get to the really fun part and probably slightly mismanaged part of the card where you have wait for it of my cat you have Adam Cole baby
come out in a singles match versus Keith Lee. And oh my gosh, did the crowd ever pop for this. I mean, this was amazing. Because, again, Adam Cole, baby, bang. Versus Keith Lee, the crowd is going absolutely bonkers. However, Adam Cole needs to realize he's the much smaller person. And there are no timeouts in wrestling. I mean, other than that, this was really good. Again, you have the smaller, way more agile guy versus the big, strong, agile guy. So the only thing Adam Cole could do is see that he began to work over the knees. Again, very classic wrestling, wrestling techniques, Take, taking out the big guy's legs. And wow. Those chest slaps. Those were not chest. Those were not chest slaps, folks. Those were chest thumps. Everyone, whenever Keith Lee did a chest thump, went ooh. That hurt me in the crop. That was the GA section. I mean, Cole just worked on the legs. A smart thing to do as a ring technician. It was such a split crowd. I mean, he knows. Cole also knows a little amateur wrestling. He did the half half Nelson pinning combination, which is one of the first pinning combinations they teach you from the top position in kind of collegiate high school and um, amateur collegiate high school and freestyle wrestling. You go for the half Nelson, half Nelson wrist control, half Nelson ankle, some half Nelson. Tight waist is like the like the super classic one. Cole would do things, and it's like, eh, eh, eh. you're just gonna get the big guy mad at you. And this was so fun. I mean, he just, I mean, he just needs stuff. It's like things what you can and can't do. My only qualm about this it was a relatively short, and Keith Lee was. So powerful just tossing Adam Cole around. Adam Cole went over. I think the reason why I gave the cheeseburger, you know, Adam Cole wasn't going to lose or do the job to Keith Lee. Keith Lee's big enough, and with these two massive names, I mean, Keith Lee could easily eat this pin 
and there would be no problem about it. So again, this was a quality, really darn good cheeseburger mat. And the winner is a cheeseburger match. You know who's going to win. Was it the seventh match should have been the main event? I mean, you have undisputed era of Kyle O'Reilly and Rodney Strong. Where they go again versus Raul Mendez and Rocky. Again, the only reason I downgrade this, I thought this was almost a flaming young match. So I know Raul Mendez and Rocky aren't winning anything. Raul Mendez, oh my god, he's going to be freaking super, he's going to be Mr. NXT. And I give him cheers and props to that. I wish I was Mr. NXT.
I mean, this was such an amazing match. I mean, Kyle Riley knows the ground game. I mean, just kept on beating him and beating him in the ground. Raul, he did a, 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 a botch rope move, but didn't phase him. He just said, you know what? Okay, I slipped the first time. I'm going to freaking do it now. And it's going to look so good. I mean, they, they clean a house. Oh my god, this could be the this this probably was the match of this was the match of the night. And again, this was really a surf and turf match. And when I mean surf and turf match, I mean not spiny lobster, I mean a freaking two pound lobster tail with filet mignon or some super porterhouse steak or prime sirloin or wagyu beef next to that two pound lobster tail because oh my gosh this was this if if it was any other tag team I would have said that this is a filet mignon match only because I know they're not going to give it to Raul and Rocky I, I just had it done. And feel free to argue with me about it. Trust me, it's that old saying, six in one a hand, half a dozen another. It was so good. And that was probably the down point of the, of the whole card because this should have been the main event. Because between this match and the Kevin and the Adam, Adam Cole, baby, match, I mean, the crowd was just emotionally and physically spent. So, I mean, this was the match of the night. I mean, just a ma amazing action back and forth. It was nonstop. The rest holds had purpose to them. They served a purpose either to go off the ropes or to or transition to something else. I mean, the crowd was, was going bonkers, undisputed error chance. Go, Raul, go. I mean, good high flying. I mean, Kevin O'Reilly just like noogies the ribs with his elbow. It's just all, all those little, all those little things a lot of wrestlers miss. They can take advantage of. You have the guy in, in the octopus stretch. Put your elbow in. Yeah, you can press down. Rub it in. Make him feel pain. Trust me, I've had bruised ribs before. Bruised intercostal ribs suck. You stretch an intercostal rib, you can't, it hurts to breathe. Kevin O'Reilly knows that, and he integrates it so well. It's a rest hold, but yeah, have you a headlock? Nuggies. You know what nuggies feel like? <laughs> it's cute, but God, it's annoying. At the time, it hurts. No nuggies are ever going to cause an injury, but they hurt. The elbow right in the ribs. Oh, it hurts. Not going to injure a person. There's a difference between deliberately injuring a person and hurting a per making a person feel pain. Elbow in the ribs will, like that will never injure a person. But they'll feel it. And it's just one of those things that steps that match up so hard. I mean, the backbreakers by Roderick Storm. I mean, it's just such a great, it was a great flow, it was a great pacing. I mean, amazing submission with high flying ability. Kyle Riley just loves to fall off the mat apron to the outside. Whatever his face is, his facial expression, whenever he takes the bump from the apron to the outside, it's the best. And then you have the total elimination. Oh, so believable. And listen, the crowd truly appreciated both the Undisputed Era and Raul Mendez and Rocky. Because after the Undisputed Era left the ring, they have such a ring presence. They, says they have such a crowd awareness. They just left the ring, raised their hands, 
Kyle Wise doing the air guitar, Roddy Strong doing whatever Roddy Strong does. But then that, le that left the defeated de de face in the ring. The crowd stood up. Thank you. You deserve it. Every kind of chant. And 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 they knew there was there was a magic there with the crowd. And the crowd knew they put on the performance of a lifetime. And this crowd was was so appreciative of it. That's one of the big things between this crowd and the past crowd. This crowd really appreciated the work the wrestlers put in. They toned the crowd and eh, they were a little bit turned off. Like, it was a whole other beast though. I bet you if they put on the show, the Daytona crowd would have been so appreciative of it. And then what I thought was going to be the main event. And it was a shock. Because this was a really low point of the... Oh, wow. This was a low point of the match. It was Nikki Cross, who is still one of my favorite wrestlers. Versus Rhea Ripley. And I did not even know there was a UK NXT Women's Champion chip. Because she held the belt. I don't think anyone else knew either. So I guess there's a UK woman's belt. And I mean this would have been great a great match for, for Nikki would have to pick it up. I mean my fear, Nikki is going to go into that black hole of WWE. She she did not get caught up with sanity. 
And my fear is that this might be the last time I see Nikki Cross. Because she is an amazing character. She is an amazing in-ring worker. Cole forever, though. In the same respects, I don't want to see her be sucked into the main roster black hole either and be a jobber to the Iconics or Billy Kay. I mean, that's my only real thing. Thank you, Nikki. And again, that was a kind of it was a whole thing. Nikki's going to kill you. My fear is Nikki becomes a, a Ty Zillinger. And it's like going to be on main on event, which I, I don't even see because that's on the network and they don't even show it on house shows. Could be a house show name. I don't know. I mean, to be a house show name, though, do you want to be on NXT or a WWE house show? I don't know the granted. I don't know the economics of it, and I don't know the prestige. But I think it's a whole thing of being the big fish in the little pond, or the small fish in a little pond versus a big fish in a little pond, or big fish in a big maybe it's a little fish in a big WWE should definitely be the little fish in a big pond. Here she's a big fish in a small pond, but she's going to be that big old fish. I mean, again, people were still chanting for her. I, I guess one of them was bleeding or something because the referee donned gloves. And I don't know if it was a simple nosebleed or just a cut lip. That that happens. But, I mean, I was disappointed because this was really a ham sandwich match. And my ham sandwich, it was fun, but what was missing? Is this the last time Hobo Tom is going to get a picture of Nikki Cross's butt? I'm not happy about that. But it is what it is. And you have the videos and pictures to, to show it, I guess. Then by the main event, I'm like, I'm going to go video crazy. So you have the Mighty, also previously known as Team 61.
geez, now I forget their names. And Donovan Dijakovic versus the Street Profits and Ricochet. Street Profits and, and, and just was well, this once you heard Ricochet, I smiled. At least they're having with a belt show up. And even though it's not going to be defended, it is Ricochet we're talking about. And again, whatever the Mightiest did, they they upset the Street Profits because they had like the Black Trunk Cup, the Black Classic Solo Cup. And we're mocking the street puppets and they had one of their chains. No, 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 no. You do not take a black person's chain. You do not take a you do not take a black solo cup.
what I mean by big no-nos, winding up in the Halifax River, big no-no. Again, it was it was a good reason. It was a good reason. The logic was sound. Three prophets were up. I'm gonna fight you for my chain back. Classic reasoning, and I get it. Ricochet, oh my, so good. So much flippy stuff. Oh flip, oh flippy stuff. TM61, I mean, the now just glorified thugs doomed for NXT purgatory forever. They're not getting called up to the main roster anytime soon, even though they probably should have as TM61. And you know what? They could have even gone to the big, the, the super showdown in Australia and got the hugest pop in all the galaxy. Instead, they're just some thugs from down under. <laughs> I mean, at, at this point, I think it was about 9.15 when it started. A few left, especially people with young kids left. And it's getting late. It is it's bedtime. Um, again, TM61. There's another tag team now. Again, it was a classic. Again, they, they, I'll give them this much. TM61 knows how to tag team wrestle. He was a classic heel. Uh, Misdirection, the huge, the, the heel, heel distraction. Again, I think that the crowd was just so drained from the Adam Cole Keith Lee match, and then to have the undisputed era match versus Raul M Mendez and Rocky that uh, the crowd is so hyped for. Then they got brought down a little bit by the Nikki Cross match. And then that kind of, they were just on that downward slide. So they just weren't as hyped. Trust me, they were still plenty hyped. But you could tell they're like, Ricochet, 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 Street Profits. They're like, Boo TM61. So again, the crowd was kind of, again, built up. And then hit hit a low mark, and then kind of fizzled out a little bit. Again, take nothing away from the wrestlers. Their performance was amazing and excellent. And it was so much better. And so much better end of the show than Daytona Beach was. It wasn't even funny. But NXT learned this lesson, I think, when they tried things at, at Daytona Beach and realized, eh, eh, this stuff ain't working. So again, you have the heels. Again, the heels just got beat up. Uh, there, uh, there were times everyone was in the ring. I think I have the video of the triple sp splash. That was very fun. I mean, the end of the night, really on a good, solid cheeseburger note. Nothing exceptional. Really darn good, though. And that's the way NXT at Sanford went. Again, I think the NX NXT learned its lesson from Daytona Beach. So if you're going to do these house shows, if you're not going to, have, you have to have a little star power. But if you're, have, if you're not going to have star power, there you better be darn good matches. And trust me, star power will take you so far. And you want to let the crowd get involved. You want to let the crowd say, "Hey, I'm part of it." The crowd says, "Hey, 
Let me be a part of it. Let me cheer. Let me boo. Let, let me do my chance. Again, w within reason. But let me do my chance. And we're going to, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to go bonkers crazy. We're going to do everything. We're coming back. Again, when, it'll be interesting to see in November when NXT comes back in to Daytona Beach. Is it going to be the same crowd? Is it going to be more? Is it going to be less? Is it going to be different? I mean, that's what I really want to see. And, and wow, I have talked amazingly. Dude, I think for a couple hours. For at least one hour. So that's enough of me, Hobo Tom. Thank you very much, YouTube audience, for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I may or may not put up videos of the concert my girlfriend went to. That depends on her. My most lovely, beautiful, and ever amazing girlfriend. Love you, sweetie. Girlfriend. So, everyone have a good night. Please enjoy the vi this video. And let me know what you think. And I shall see everyone probably, if not at the beginning of October. I think mid-October will be my next live stream. For sure, when the Ring of Honor does their pay-per-view show. I forget what it's called. I will always let you guys know. Again, stay notified, stay subscribed. Thank you very much, guys. Time to go to work. Bye.